now! Merry Christmas, everyone. This is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and welcome to the annual uh, Vintage Computer Roundup video, I guess you could call it. First of all, I just want to say I hope everyone has a wonderful uh, Christmas this year. And this is going to be a quite a different Christmas for me, and as I can probably guess a lot of you, because of, for, for obvious reasons of stuff going on in the world, but we'll not focus on that. But anyway, let's get started with um, this year's uh, Vintage Computer Roundup. I'm going to do it a little bit differently this year. Used to, I would show every single computer I had, and that would take forever. And so, um, in this year's video, I'm only going to show the computers I currently have in service that are hooked up and actually doing stuff right now. And I'm only going to show the desktops. Uh, as much as I would love to show the laptops, that would just make this video way too long. So I apologize for that. But anyway, let's get started. It was the season of Christmas, and all through the mall, every creature was stirring, both great and small. The lights up and twinkle and sparkle and shine with ribbons and garlands that herald Christmas time. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, and little tots telling Santa just what to put there. So for holiday shopping, for one and for all, there's one place to go, Carolina Circle Mall. Okay, the first computer we're going to look at in this uh, video is the Packard Bell Legend 406 CD. This is the only Packard Bell that I uh, received to add to my collection this year. But it's a very good one. Um, we actually did a uh, full video about it for Nostalgia Mall Christmas this year, but it was actually uh, over there. But now it's over here with a smaller monitor. That This is because I just wanted it closer to my uh, main computer. And it is now running both 3.1 and 95 just so I can have a 95 machine closer to my main computer. This computer originally shipped with a 75 megahertz Intel Pentium processor, 8 megabytes of RAM, a 850 megabyte hard drive, and Windows 95. This computer now has a 100 megahertz Pentium processor. Well, it's the same uh, chip. I just overclocked it a 2 gigabyte CF card um, in a CF card adapter. I have two 2 gig cards, one for Windows 95 and the other for Windows 3.1. It has been upgraded to, I believe, 40 megabytes of RAM and it is, like I said, running two operating systems now. So let's go ahead and turn it on. This computer was also uh, completely yellowed when I got it this past summer. So this computer was the recipient of my very first retro brighting um, and I think it came out very, very well. And we're just going to look at Windows 95 on here today because we already saw it run 3.1 in its previous video. So I imagine this video is going to be kind of a long one. It usually is um, these Christmas Day videos. And these speakers have been giving me problems. Here it is running Windows 95, which is what it originally shipped with. Go uh, 95B, I upgraded it to B. And we can go ahead and give it a uh, Christmas MIDI test.
Actually, let's do another one. These speakers are on their last legs, by the way. Okay, we'll run a game on here real quick. This game is uh, Gus Goes to Cybertown, one of my childhood favorites. Hi, my name is Gus, and welcome to Cybertown. A little loud, isn't it? <laughs> Nice to meet you, Gus. This was the first Gus game, by the way. That child can change uh, clothes, color, and gender all at the same time. Amazing. Yes, those do exist here. Nice to point that out, Gus. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, brunch. We always like the Cyber Munch. Mm-hmm. Pumpkin. Watermelon. Bananas. Grapes. Spaghetti. An avocado is also known as an alligator pear. The more you know. Now, now where's KidVid from uh, the Burger King Kids Club? That's not him. I always eat there he is. three meals a day. It gives me energy. I call him that because he looks just like Kid Vid. Uh, it's <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> okay, now let's give a DOS game a try, and I believe the game we'll try out is Epic Pinball. Okay, um, it's not shareware, folks, so don't go passing this around to people. A pot of gold. I don't know if I've ever done this one too much. Okay, I, this does not bode well. <laughs> Interesting music, though.
It's dark. Get the flashlight. Boy, that sounded kind of creepy. <laughs> I believe we got about a couple more balls left. I do really like this game. I wish I would have had it back in the day, though. Because you can't go wrong with a good pinball game on a computer. My favorite, of course, still being uh, 3D Ultra Pinball, the original. Okay, now shoot treasure hole. I know someone who shot a treasure hole one time. They got thrown in jail for about six months. Game over. Open our initials. And that's the Packard Bell Legend 406 CD. Great little computer. And so let's move on to the next one. Next up we have the Gateway 2000 P590. This has been a mainstay of my computer collection for about two and a half years. I got it back in March of 2018 and I've had a lot of good times with this computer. You see my uh, the first computer I ever used was a uh, Gateway 2000 P5100 XL owned by my aunt that she got in um, May of 1995 and throughout the summer and beyond I was just obsessed with that computer. Um, when I wasn't playing on the Packard Bell at home, I would be at her house playing on the uh, Gateway 2000. And she still has it to this day. And she still uses it to this day for uh, vintage gaming, just like I do. But I wanted one of these for myself, so I bought this off of eBay for way more than I usually pay for a vintage computer. But even though this isn't the same model, it's the exact same case style and everything. This one uh, was built in August of 1994. It originally came with a 90 megahertz Intel Pentium socket 5, a uh, about I believe 16 megabytes of memory, a 1 gig hard drive, a 2 meg ATI Mach 64 video card. It currently has a front-mounted uh, SD card slot on the front in place of a hard drive, so I can switch between uh, the two operating systems I use on here, which are Windows 3.1 and Windows 95. It has a uh, Sound Blaster 16 sound card in it. Still has the ATI card. Still has the 90 megahertz Pentium but the memory has been upgraded to 32 megs of RAM. Now you're probably wondering where the quaint little uh, Gateway 2000 monitor is that I got this past summer. Well I still have it, it's just in storage right now. Um, the uh, display on that monitor is just not very good. It doesn't fill the whole screen and while it works okay enough I was just getting tired of the uh, quirks with it, so right now I'm using this um, very nice but very enormous Dell Trinitron monitor from the year 2000, which um, actually works very, 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 very well.
Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, start it up. Now listen to uh, how loud this monitor is when you first turn it on. I think I, think I feel my hair sticking up. <laughs> and anyway, here's the computer itself. Let's fire it up. Currently have the Windows 3.1 SD in there. And this is an 8 gigabyte SD card, but with this being a uh, FAT16 and MS-DOS, um, I'm only able to use 2 gigs of the card. And we'll go ahead and load up Windows. And here we are, good old Windows 3.1. And here's the uh, spooler program that we installed in a recent video in order to print. Okay, let's dive into um, this computer and see what we have installed. We have some uh, Gateway 2000 uh, technical uh, manuals, like System Basics. Let's see what this has to say. Presenting your online guide, System Basics. When you see one of these pink dots, you can move the cursor to it and read more. Give it a try. Okay, we have to choose whether we have a desktop or a tower. We definitely have the tower. Actually looks pretty good for what it is. This is the CD-ROM for a typical installation. It is usually configured as the D drive. I think it's the D drive on here as well. There's the floppy drive. System key lock. You can use it to lock out the keyboard. I do not have the key for this computer, by the way. Power on LED. Hard drive light. And the reset switch. And on the rear, we have all these good things. I believe this is a baby AT design. Here's the inside. Showing the motherboard, floppy drive, hard drive, CD drive, and the power supply. And right here we have a couple of alternate shells I have installed on here. We've always seen uh, Microsoft Bob, we all know what that's about, but here's Workspace which is uh, commonly found on Packard Bell computers, but they actually made a standalone copy of Workspace for non-Packard Bell computers. And so let's check it out. And we'll give ourselves a user. And here we are, Arc Workspace 2.0, a Packard Bell company, so makes sense. And you got the 2D uh, view right here where you um, have quick access to documents and uh, other tools here. You just got to add a lot of these yourself though. 
and you can click here and switch to a 3D view. And here's the 3D view, which has a very Packard Bell Navigator-esque look to it. And you can click here and we can exit to Windows or DOS. We'll stay in Windows for now. Okay, let's try out a game. We'll go to the Sierra directory and let's uh, try King's Quest 7, which I remember my aunt playing on her Gateway 2000, so it's appropriate to play it on this one. I believe. And we'll just go ahead and go straight into the game. Uh, we'll just type in my name, I suppose. Uh, chapter 1. Where in the blazes am I? I don't know why I did that with an accent. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Don't you hate it when you just r a tornado randomly transports you to a nice. desert? What is this place? Where is my Rosella, my child? You are in a land known as Nevada. I can't prove it, but let's just say it's Nevada. <laughs> and that was the king of Nevada. Okay, so what can we do? Well, let's pick up this part of her dress. What good that'll do us. It's been years since I've played this game. Let's see what's in here. Hmm. Peaceful enough. What? what? Oh my gosh! What is that thing? What is it? What is it? What is it? Help! Help! I'm... I'm okay. Well? I've got to find a way to get rid of that horrible thing. Or at least distract it for a while. She is dead now. She is expired. Your game has now been saved. I'm gonna need some time to recover from that, folks. Okay, let's play another game on here that won't result in uh, myself uh, convulsing. Another game that I used to play on my aunt's gateway, Malcolm's Revenge. I believe it will drop us down into DOS in order to play this. Let's look at that introduction. Apologies for the refresh rate um, and the flickering. I don't know how to adjust that in DOS.
Malcolm was a normal baby. He faced the same temptations as every child. And like any other that is the ugliest baby I've ever seen in my life. To guide his actions. Don't pull that kitty's tail. You'll get punished. Pull it. It'll be fun. But resisting temptation was never easy for Malcolm. The moral balance was tested frequently during Malcolm's youth. <laughs> Gunther, what did that squirrel ever do to you? Hey, take a hike, Stuart. We're having fun here. A complete deterioration was inevitable. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> As young Malcolm grew into manhood, he became famous and successful in his own way. But Malcolm's path was never easy, and many setbacks disturbed his plans. in his own stony form. As the ignorant residents of Karandia sleep, their worst nightmare begins. And Malcolm prepares to greet the world again. Now, with your help, we can finally hear Malcolm's side of the story. You know, with a face like that, no wonder he's so mean. Yes, this is a game from the 90s. You can tell from the uh, rap intro. Now, I do not remember how to play this game at all. All I remember was a uh, scene in the game where you go down a giant slide and he makes a funny face that used to crack me up when I was little. Those Caribbean squares are killers. I'd better go home. Doesn't look like they kept any of my things in the castle. If Brandon is such a good guy, then why does he keep his gate locked? Common sense, maybe? Ah, they've renovated the old transporters. I wonder where this one goes. as always. This one will open the lock. The Magician's Lodge. So yeah, it looks like a pretty fun game. I'll have to sit down and actually play it for a while when I have some time, but anyway, let's move on. Uh, Alright, let's give this a 
Christmas MIDI test. This uses the Super Sappy FM driver like you would find on a Windows 3.1 Packard Bell, which sounds pretty good actually, so let's try it out with Carol of the Bells. So there you have it, that's the Gateway 2000 P590, one of my favorite computers in my collection. And I would show Windows 95 on here, but you've pretty much seen all there is to see for this computer in this video. We already saw uh, 95 on the Legend 406 CD. And now on to our next computer. Next up we have the Carolina Flyer. This is my uh, main Windows 98 computer. And it's KVM'd currently with the Gateway 2000 just for uh, the sake of space. And it works just fine um, KVM'd with it. It has a 866 megahertz Intel Pentium 3 a 32 gig SD card in place of a hard drive right here. It's front pa front mounted panel. It has, uh, I believe, 256 megs of RAM. Actually, it might be 128. One of the two. Either way, it's more than enough for this kind of computer. And it also has an 80 gigabyte hard drive for keeping my uh, game files on and other documents. And it has a 3D Effects Voodoo 3. And, I know I keep saying and a lot, a Sound Blaster Autogy sound card. It's currently in this uh, nice little black case, which is not too bad, but I'm actually considering uh, changing it out for another uh, black case because, um, I don't know, this one's kind of falling apart. Especially right here, I can't keep this uh, uh, blanking plate in for some reason. I don't know what the deal is, and, you know, I just don't like the glossiness of this. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens as far as a case is concerned. Also has a uh, DVD-ROM slash CD-RW drive, ZIP-250, and a 3.5 inch floppy drive. Okay, let's uh, try out the Carolina Flyer. I have to admit, I actually don't use this computer as much as I used to. It's still a great computer, but I've been doing so much with uh, Windows 3.1 and Windows 95 era computers lately that this one just has not gotten the love it deserves. And of course it's running Windows 98 Second Edition with um, the Plus Pack. I stuck a fan on top of the uh, video card to keep it cool, and the fan is very, very loud, unfortunately. So that's the noise you're probably hearing. Ooh, I'm going to have to adjust the refresh rate on here, it looks like. <laughs> Our creative startup sound. 
Okay, it's a little harder on my eyes now, but at least it looks a lot better on camera. But here we are, let's check out and see what's on the Carolina Flyer. We'll go to System Properties. Okay, we actually have 256 megs of RAM. There's our 3DFX Voodoo 3. Has onboard Ethernet. It's a uh, Intel motherboard that I use in here. The Socket 370. And there's our Sound Blaster Audigy. Let's see what we have installed on here. And there is quite a bit. We have uh, all kinds of games, inclu including, um, now this isn't a game, we have uh, Office uh, 2000 with Work Suite 2001, I believe. You can check that out. Oh, there's that stupid portfolio. What is the point of this thing? No, I don't want it to start. Anyway, here's Work Suite 2001, which gives us uh, Microsoft Word, along with the Works Spreadsheet, Works Database, Works Calendar, and the portfolio that we just saw, unfortunately. Get Picture It Publishing, Streets and Trips, MSN, and you also have Encarta, but I didn't install that because I don't have the CD for it. And so let's just open up Word. We'll uh, find ourselves a good font here. Uh, that looks Christmassy. And we'll uh, crank up to 26 point. Where the heck did you come from, mister? I do not want to create a macro. I am not a macro kind of guy. Now please, leave me alone. Thank you. Alright, we'll go with uh, red. Merry Christmas. Okay, we'll uh, play a game or two. Let's play something Christmassy this time. How about Jazz Jack Rabbit 2, Holiday Hair 98? This isn't exactly the easiest uh, Jazz Jack Rabbit ever made. Okay, we get it. A lot of people made this. No. We'll do easy. Now, Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 is nice and all, but I prefer the original, especially the original uh, holiday hairs from 1994 and 1995. Now, I forgot the uh, what the controls are for the keyboard. We'll just stomp on them for now. Okay, here's some more weapons. There we go, space bar. I'm probably gonna die soon. <laughs> Now, 
how do I select a weapon? And so long since I played this game, I'm just gonna hit random buttons, I suppose. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we'll just stick with this weapon then, I suppose, and hope for the best. I am extremely low on health. Now, if I can get to that carrot, well, and I didn't. And we're back to the beginning, no weapons. Yeah, I am not good at this game. I much prefer the original Jazz Jack Rabbit. Oh, was that some coins? Oh, yes, it was. Maybe by some miracle we can get a little bit further this time. Oh, this was the part that I struggled with before. Getting up these platforms. shouldn't have done that. Oh, there we go. We actually made it. It's a Christmas miracle. Okay, that did not go well. Now we're back at the, where we started. Okay. I can't go there. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, that took that wall down here. Watch out for the spikes below. Get some nice little coinage here. Oops. It told me to watch out for the spikes below and I didn't listen. get through this level, I wonder. There is a cheat code for this game, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> I don't feel like looking either.
Boy, this is a long level, but we made a commitment here. We got to see it through. More weapons. Okay, I need some dynamite. Where can I find the dynamite? There we go. Oh, that's good enough. And I'm dead. You know what, that's good enough for today. And I think that's enough of the Carolina Flyer for today. But it's still running just fine. Might be getting a new case for it, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what the new year brings to us. Alright, next up we have the Carolina XP, a computer I built earlier this year. And this is at my main Windows XP computer. It is running on a uh, Intel motherboard with a Intel Core 2 Quad uh, Q9550. One of the best uh, Socket 775 CPUs you can get. It has a uh, 250 gig hard drive, 4 gigs of RAM, of course XP only sees 3 of it and a NVIDIA Quadro uh, video card in it, um, which is in there temporarily. Uh, it's a long story, but I'm sure it'll do the job just fine. And it's all housed in this nice little fractal design uh, mini ATX, uh, micro ATX uh, case. I also have a uh, DVD-ROM and a 3.5 inch floppy drive, just because, why not? All right, let's check out the Carolina XP. Probably a good idea to turn the monitor on. And we'll go ahead and boot into uh, good old Windows XP, still one of my favorite operating systems of all time. And from what I've seen, it's the favorite among many others. And the funny thing about Windows XP, I say this in just about every video I do about XP, XP still doesn't seem old to me for some reason. It still feels modern, I guess because it was the first real modern feeling version of Windows that I remember. Because, it, because coming off of 98 and ME, XP was just... An enormous step up, really. It is a little slow to start up, but once it gets going, it's quite uh, zippy. I promise I will never say zippy ever again. And I'm running it at 1920 by 1080. Resolution. Let's check out what we got on here. I've got the new Moon browser, which lets me uh, browse the web on it uh, quite reliably. Would not recommend it though, seeing that Windows XP has been out of support for uh, well over six years now. 
You know what, just for some giggles, let's do the XP tour. Welcome to Windows XP from Microsoft, the new version of Windows that brings your PC to life. Experience the best. Experience Windows XP. Best for business. Windows XP Professional shines as a business operating system. Get more work done faster, easier, anytime, anywhere. Safe and easy personal computing. Thank to begin the tour, click any selection. Uh, we'll do uh, XP Basics. You can tell this was meant for a 4x3 display. Menus and a whole lot more. Discover Windows XP's fresh, streamlined design. Get acquainted with key tasks and basic commands. The Windows Desktop. Using Windows XP is simple. First, you'll see the large colored area on the screen called the Desktop and the narrow band at the bottom called the taskbar. Everything you can do on your computer appears inside frames that are called windows. You can open as many windows at one time as you like and resize them, move them around, or restack them in any order. Isn't that nice? Icons. The small pictures you see on the desktop are called icons. Think of them as doorways to the files and programs stored on your computer. I have never thought of an icon as a doorway, and I never will. Text appears identifying its name or contents. To open the file or program, double-click the icon. Shortcut icons, identified by the small arrow on the lower left, let you access programs, files, folders, disk drives, web pages, printers, even other computers. And because desktop shortcuts simply supply links to those files or devices, you can add and delete their icons without affecting the actual programs or files. The first time you start Windows XP, you'll see only one icon. You know what, let's go to the Start menu. Start menu. The Start menu appeared automatically the first time you ran Windows XP. You, you can can't prove that. The start menu anytime by clicking the Start button on the taskbar. The Start menu contains everything you need to begin using Windows. You can start programs, open files, customize your system, get help, search for items on your computer, and more. Some commands on the Start menu have a right-facing arrow. That means additional choices are available on a secondary menu. Place your pointer over an item with an arrow, and another menu will you know, I've been using Windows XP since 2002, so I already know how to use it. Real quick, we'll go through our uh, system properties and look at our device manager. See, um, there's our Q9550. It's clocked at 2.83 gigahertz. Bit overkill for XP, but you know it's better to have more, uh, too much and not enough. We have an NVIDIA Quadro FX380. I'm not sure the spec of it. I have it on? I, I'm using it only temporarily. Intel Gigabit Network. And I have a Creative Sound Blaster X5 in here. I really don't play too many games in Windows XP. XP is more of a tinker OS for me for most of the time. But I do like to um, indulge in a few games on here. My favorite being SimCity 4. A game that is highly addicting to me. Although admittedly, um, ever since I got married I haven't really played it much just because I've been busy with other things. Maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> EA Games. Okay, let's skip through all this. All right, and here's the region I've been working on. Let's look at the uh, big port city called Warrington. Okay, let's uh, check this little city out. And 
course, I it's just the way I am. I always have to put a bunch of roads and cities. Just what I do. Here's the uh, beach area. We'll zoom out for that. <laughs> But it's actually running quite nicely on this uh, video card. I remember playing it on uh, my Dell Dimension 2350 with its onboard uh, Intel graphics back in the day, and that was a nightmare on this game. But yet, yeah, I still played it. I still had a good time. I guess I was just more patient back then. <laughs> bypass around the city. And so yes, yeah, SimCity 4 running just fine on here. I won't bother saving it this time. Okay, we'll uh, go ahead and shut this computer down. That was the Carolina XP. Now on to our final and best computer of the video. And we can't leave this computer out. This is my favorite computer of all time. The computer that started it all, the Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT, which just celebrated its 25th anniversary the other week. See, it was 25 years ago this month when my dad purchased this computer. Now since the 25th anniversary video, I did swap the monitor out for this bigger Packard Bell monitor, which is not quite original to this computer, but it's the same aesthetic, it's good enough, and it gets the job done. So, uh, yeah. This computer has a Intel Pentium with 100 megahertz, 16 megs of RAM originally, originally had a 1.2 gig hard drive, it now has a 2 gig CF card, and 32 megs of RAM. This computer I try to keep as much of a time capsule as I can and that I don't do any unnecessary upgrades to this computer. The uh, most invasive this computer's ever gotten is a CF card upgrade. It's just because this was my childhood computer even though it's not the original original it's the same model and I kinda wanna keep this as more of a time capsule nostalgia machine and so I keep the uh, all the crazy upgrades and tinkering for the other computers in my collection and so let's go ahead and fire it up um, I've explained the history of this computer before many times especially in my uh, 25th anniversary computer uh, video for this computer by the way I've still got the Hot Wheels car up there that we uh, looked at in the uh, a computer car video recently from Hot Wheels. I've had this particular Legend 822 CDT since 2013, so uh, almost eight years with this computer, and I've and knock on wood, I've never had any single issue with it.
And here we are at the desktop. And since this is a Christmas video, it's kind of a special occasion, let's go ahead and look at Packer Bell Navigator as always. Welcome from Packard Bell. Why, thank you. Now you will kindly shut up. The info guide at the bottom of the screen gives you more information about each area of Navigator. Why, thank you, and thank you for shutting up again. Our system manuals. Well, and here's what um, workspace looks like on an actual Packard Bell. I know we saw the uh, oh, the non OEM version a while ago on the Gateway 2000. This one resembles a Navigator a bit more for obvious reasons. Okay, this is going to be kind of a special occasion because I am about to play a game that I have not played since I was about seven years old, maybe eight years old, and it's uh, this game right here, Mortimer and the Riddles of the Medallion, and I forget exactly how this game goes, but I remember playing it on my Ant's Gateway and on the... Packard Bell at home, and this game was hard, as you know what. But there was parts in the game that made me laugh like crazy, because it would uh, constantly crash my aunt's gateway, and for some reason, when it would crash, I would laugh. <laughs> I must have been some kind of sadistic weirdo, but let's load up Mortimer and see if we can uh, bring back some... Uh, memories, whether they're pleasant or unpleasant, we will find out. And there's a plate in the way, that's what keeps making that clanging noise. Okay, so joystick should be ready to go. Enter a name for your new save game, Billy. Let's see, we can be either Sally or Sid. Well, um, for reasons that are quite obvious, let's be Sid. And we can do easy for uh, everything. And so, let us go. I forget what the specs of this game were requiring for uh, as far as system requirements. But I do remember it not running the best on my Packard Bill back in the day. This, of course, is made by LucasArts, known for the uh, Secret of Monkey Island game. Oh, we gotta love the stock sound effects. Wonderful voice acting, folks. Hey, where, where are you going? I'm not waiting for you, Sid. You think about everything too much. No, I don't. And so what if I do? Sally, are you... Whoa! What a place! Sid, you better come here. I think I found one. I hate it when I look inside a, a bush in my backyard. And find it a, a completely different world, and discover that people and pets have been turned to stone. Look, it's like a piece of jewelry. All that happened to me last uh, Monday, and it was very annoying. I saw it first. No, you didn't. Don't 
Yes, this game does skip. <laughs> Yes, he's a snail. Look, what? That's his whole gimmick. What are you staring at? You kids aren't going to tell me I'm the first snail you've ever seen. No, no. Maybe the biggest. I'm Sally, and this is his friend Sid. I'm much older than he is. Uh-uh. Sibling so rivalry is, is always is funny. These kids up. No time for pointing. For some crazy reason, boy. we'll never know. I'm about to tell them the story of Lodius. Oh, and I thought I was having a nightmare. Oh, this is going to take forever, isn't it? But late one night, he ransacked my archive. The most precious object he took from me was a rare ancient medallion. Didn't seem like a bad guy. Who would have thought he was a kleptomaniac? The medallion gave Lodius great power. He used that power to absorb the vitality from the animals of the world, leaving only statues in their place. He couldn't catch up to me, though. No way. Not the Sliminator. I guess I was a little, a little too slippery for him. No, he created a terrible kingdom for himself. His evil use of the medallion caused him to change. And he's now in uh, U.S. government. And that's as political as I'm ever going to get on this channel. I had glowstones one time, they hurt like crazy. When it comes to eating, taking long naps, and slobbering on my best friend Sid. Doc, you pick the pilot. Which one of these little little goobers do you think has the right stuff? I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. Pick me, pick me, please. It's me, 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 please, please, me, me, me. Sid, it's up to you to rescue the animal and reclaim the medallion. And be sure to fasten your safety belt. Mortimer has best been known to fly eye upside down. <laughs> oh, don't need to brag about me, Doc. The kid will find out soon enough. What's the worst thing that could happen? Don't ever say that in a comedy. Each medallion piece is guarded by a gate. Listen carefully to what each gate has out of you. Think hard before you answer. 
I hope they do. I'm sure the evil Lodius will try to make their journey as, as difficult as possible. Okay, it's been 23 years since I've last played this. This is not going to go well, I imagine, but hey. I remember, I remember this intro so well. Okay, let's get ready here. I'm probably not going to do well. Here we go. Wow, it's like a picture book. Time to go to work. My high-tech patented revitoscope is ready for action. Let's keep, keep our bug in the middle of eyes peeled. See the animals near the tree? Don't forget the scope of Try not to hit rocks the tree, and watch out for Lodius flying goons. Okay, I'm doing the best I can. Hey, nice job! You might just work out, kid. I know I should be scoping. Okay, what's going to happen here? Yeah, this is uh, probably one of the parts where you can die. Yeah, this is, I guess this is running on full motion video, at least the foreground, or the background, whatever you want to call it. And I just crash. That means we lost. Okay, so we got sent back over to this part of the level. Okay, we're going into the tornado.
This is a very different kind of game, I must say. <laughs> Okay, uh, I suppose I'm doing okay. If this were a higher spec computer, it would probably run better. I remember having uh, slowdown problems on the original 822 as well. Um, this game is available anywhere online, I would um, recommend you guys give it a try. This game, by the way, came out in 1996. According to the copyright date, at least. Gotta do this thing again. When I get my corner packer bell back, I'll have to give it a try on there to see if it runs a bit better. Actually, I could probably try it on the Carolina Flyer. That would probably run it even better than any of these packer bells. Let's go left. Okay, what happened? Is this good or bad? Is, is that Lodius? Nah. That's a good looking. It's gotta be one of the gates Professor Laszlo told us about. See? He's, he's guarding a medallion piece. Good morning, Mr. Gigantic Stonegate, sir. You do got company. Silence, you silly snail. What on earth? Hey, 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 this is a family video, folks.
Mm-hmm. Hello there, there. I'm an oxpecker, also known as a tick bird. bird. Gee, how was I ever lucky enough to get two such attractive names? I'm about seven or eight inches long, and I'm, I'm basically a vampire. I spent most of my time perched on big animals like rhinos or giraffes. I look for blood-sucking ticks on their hides, and then I eat the t ticks so I can... Oh, yeah, I forgot to say, this is also an educational game. Gross, huh? Sorry. And the stuff you learn, I wouldn't recommend. Although I do enjoy eating the blood-filled ticks, my special beak is designed to remove blood and scar junk from the animal's wound. It causes the wound to heal slower, but so far nobody's complaining. Let's see what this riddle thing is. Our troop must climb to get away, or else we'll wind up leopard spray. I think the answer to the riddle will be one of the animals. Ready to answer the riddle. Oh, this ain't gonna be easy. I require seven glowstones for each attempt at solving my riddle. My answer is it's the ox pecker. <sighs> it's not it, is it? I knew it. Oh, okay, maybe we need to uh, interview them, but that's probably too late. Okay, they must climb. I require uh, seven glow stones for each attempt at solving my riddle. My answer is the baboon. The baboon climbs trees to stay safe from predators. Okay, uh, I guess that was it. <laughs> this might be the longest part of the video. I'm sorry, but this game is just intriguing. <laughs> you got it, you, you got it, you got it, yeah. You got the Madonna. You got it, you got it, you got it, yeah. A piece of the medallion, yeah. Salt is a snail's worst enemy. My salt shaker hornets are designed to fizz that sorry slug right out of his shell. Don't be too smug, Lodi, old boy. They got through that wave of your little, little buds, boys. I just hope you've got something tougher than that in mind for those two. Let's see if we can find a way to save the game and uh, play some more later. Because this is uh, dragging on a little long. Okay, let's try out a Christmas song for a MIDI test. Let's see what we got on here.
Okay, that's um, the Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. We will see it again very soon for our annual New Year's Eve video. But until then, we'll shut it on down for the day. And so, that concludes Nostalgia Mall Christmas for the year 2020. This has been probably one of the biggest years of my life. Um, I've gone from living in my parents' house for my entire life to uh, being married to a sweet, kind, beautiful woman and living on my own now in my own place. And I've also changed uh, towns as well. It's been a very big year, um, not just because of uh, COVID, which um, really changed a lot of things this year for me. Um, Christmas this year, because of COVID, is going to be quite different for me and not in the best way. Um, I'm going to be uh, not able to see my extended family this year. And a lot of stuff I do at church every Christmas has not been able to happen, like the big Christmas Eve service that I've gone to just about every year of my life is not going to happen this year. And so it's a lot of stuff to adjust to, but you know what? I know we'll get through it. I know we'll have a better 2021. And as far as the channel is concerned, we're not going anywhere. I look forward to uh, bringing you even more videos as the new year arrives. I'll probably be taking next week off. I'm still going to be doing, as I've said, the uh, annual New Year's Eve video where we uh, count down to the new year on the Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. That's one thing that hasn't changed. And uh, before I go, I want to mention a few computers that are still in ser that, that are still in service. I haven't gotten rid of, but I just couldn't show in this video because they're not hooked up. I still I still have the Dell Dimension 2350, the computer I've had since I was 13. That's still running great. I just don't have it hooked up right now. And you're probably wondering about the Corner Packer Bill. Where has it been lately? It hasn't been seen in my videos since I moved. Well, that's because um, it is currently being used by LGR. As you may already know, I lent the Corner Packard Bell to him back in September so he could do a video about it, which that video has been released um, about a month ago, and I'm very um, thrilled to see that he's gotten some good use out of that computer. And it will be coming back soon. He's still doing a few things with it, and so um, I look forward to... Um, hooking it up in the apartment for the very first time and um, I will definitely be doing more videos about that computer once it does return. And so I just want to wish everyone here a very very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I will see you next time and until then this is Billy Core.
thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You may also support me on Patreon if you would like. The links to these are in the description below. Until next time, this is Billy Core wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.